Imagine yourself back in 2001 playing the original Xbox version of Halo. Now imagine yourself being whooshed forward through time to 2014 to play Destiny. You would understand immediately how intimately connected those two series are. They're very similar types of games, the environment, the way they look, the way they feel. But there is a sense that this is a company still wedded to the past. Everywhere you go in their offices, there are signs of Halo and of Master Chief. But the world has changed a great deal. Players have changed a great deal. I wonder if Bungie has changed enough. I'm here at Bungie's offices and I got to play the game for about an hour and a half. It's an extremely controlled experience, a lot of PR people hanging around. We played one single area and we played it over and over again. They didn't even let me see the ending. What we didn't see was anything to do with story, to do with the kind of narratives that this company is known for. I got to play a strike mission. Three of us go into an alien area, we shoot all the aliens, we get to an end of level boss and we kill him. It all felt very familiar because it was, it felt like a Halo game. But there are things going on here that are different from those older games. The game is absolutely lovely. I looked down at one point and there was a weed growing out from between the stones. It told me so much about this world. It told me about the death, the loss of humanity that had happened there, the sense of degradation. Everywhere you look, you feel as if you're part of a world that has been waiting for you for centuries, not something that was just cobbled together by game developers. We're introducing a bunch of new things. What would it be like if humans actually were able to colonize Mars really easily and live there for a long period of time? What's it look like to have that huge line of rusted cars that goes on for miles and like it gives, you know, gives our artists uh, a lot of leeway to, to do some cool things that we would never would have been able to do before. I mean, visual storytelling is hugely important for us, so I think if you look at the world, we showed off the patrol uh, for you guys this week, we can really just pack a lot of visual punch, whether it's the wind moving through the trees, derelict planes with you know, broken hulls and rust with enemies scavenging it. We can really tell stories of the environment. Here was a world where humans had once lived and they lived there no longer. It was infested with aliens. Me and two other players went in there and we worked together to destroy the aliens. And it was nice to work with those other guys. But also being the sort of person who likes to do things on my own, I kind of went off and I had my own tiny little adventure while they did their thing. And that sort of freedom is something that Bungie is keen to stress. You get to play this game the way you want to play it. This game is about you. Destiny is about you and the character that you're going to build. It's not about the Master Chief character. To build that world, we wanted to make this rich, vibrant, interesting, hopeful world where you could become whatever you wanted to be as a guardian. The thing that I think is ultimately going to blow people's minds when they first experience it is having this really tight action first person game that when they travel down to these destinations, they'll actually witness other players doing things in the world that has nothing to do with what they're doing at that particular time. So it, it adds this life and chaos and interest to the world that wouldn't normally be there. We call those bubbles. And players continue to move from private to public bubbles as they move through their adventures. Doing that is very, very complex. As you're entering into the next world, we you know, send out a query and look for other people that are in those spaces. And we do that all the time. We're doing it constantly behind the scenes. Like you don't even know that it's happening because then at that point it feels like, yeah, it feels like magic, I guess. One of the things we've seen from other shooters that have come out recently have been an attempt to uh, move the, the, the genre forward in terms of how you interact with the world. Literally, when I press a button, this thing happens. The, like Titanfall, the way that there's quite a lot of different things you can do with Titanfall that you couldn't do with, with Call of Duty, and I'm, and I'm sort of missing that from the difference between the sort of Halo games and... and, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think first and foremost, there's a lot, we, we showed you a very, very small portion of, of the game yesterday, and we're looking forward to showing quite a bit, quite a bit more. Um, certainly the biggest thing that you're going to change over time is you, you the player. I think there, you'll find there's a lot of things, there are hidden mysteries all throughout these, what are uh, quite large environments, these destinations that you're going to go to that we are going to uh, have you explore, uncover mysteries to be unlocked. Uh, so I think we're doing quite a bit of that. This game has a relationship with, with Halo, obviously. Uh, how closely have you tried to manage that relationship in terms of, no, that looks just a little bit too much like the stuff we did before? You know, we hear those things and, and we sort of embrace them because, like, we loved the work we did on Halo and most of the same, you know, design sensibilities are, are carrying us forward. And 
Destiny just allows us to push those boundaries in different ways than we did with, with our previous games. There's a hell of a lot riding on this. There are 500 people here working on this game. Activision has committed to a 10-year contract. So they need to get it right. One thing we do know about Bungie is they do get things right. This is a company with a great track record. But we're left with a lot of questions unanswered. We've come up here to play the game, and we haven't really got to play that much. We certainly haven't seen enough of the narrative, the story, the characters that we're really desperate to see. There are so many more questions, and we have to wait till E3 to answer them.